Hi everyone, welcome back to the Hubian Talent channel. This is Stella Bella. So it's been a while since I've done a finance video. So today I wanted to talk about um, a few finance tips that can help you to save a bit of money. As we know the economy right now, we are in a high inflation economy. Everyone's struggling a little bit because the dollar isn't worth as much. Our buying power isn't worth as much and we're really feeling the pinch in our wallets. But today I wanted to talk about some really quick and easy strategies that are simple and we may not have thought of because we're just in the throes of our normal daily existence of life that will actually help you save some money. Now, first and foremost, have a look at your spending. So obviously it goes without saying, in order to save money, we need to reduce the amount that we're spending. And a lot of the times when the economy has been good or we've had a few extra dollars in our pockets, we get into these bad spending habits where we might sign up for subscriptions that we don't actually use or get into the habit of buying a coffee every single day, even if we don't need it. Have a look at where your money is actually going and look at where you can actually cut costs. Now, this doesn't mean you have to cut out all the things that you love and enjoy and make life worth living. If every day you need your $5 coffee, that is fine. No problem. It just means you've got to look at some other things that you can cut costs on that might not necessarily be what you need for the time being. The important thing when it comes to saving money and cutting costs is to understand that it's not forever because the economy is a little bit crazy at the moment. And if we have a look at the history of the economy, we can see that everything goes in cycles. So right now, things might be tougher, but it will bounce back. And when it does bounce back, that's when we get to enjoy all of the things that we used to, all of the spending habits that we built was from when the economy was good and that will come back again. It just means that when the economy is tough, it is the same for everybody. Well, for most people, it's okay. It's temporary as long as you have some measures now in place to track your spending a little bit better and to cut costs and save money so you don't sort of spiral into a big web of debt and overspending that you can't get out of later. So have a look at, for example, your credit cards, your bank statements, see the things that tend to pop up regularly and any subscriptions that you have that you don't even use. For example, if you've got a subscription to Netflix, Stan, Binge, Prime Video, Disney Plus, you can't possibly watch everything all at the same time. Maybe cut back, have a look at what streaming service you spend your time on most and cut back on all of the rest. Same with Spotify, YouTube Music, Amazon Music. If you tend to spend all of your time on Spotify. Cut back on the rest. If you have a lot of apps that you've signed up for back when times were good and you don't really use them that often now, cancel those subscriptions. And if you go into your Google Play account or your iTunes app account, you'll be able to see all of the subscriptions that you have and the ones that you can cancel. And like I said, it's not forever. Cancel it now, you can always sign up for it later. Now, number two, speaking of checking your credit card and bank statements, you should be checking your bank statements for any fraudulent activities or fees that are taken out that are incorrect. And this is something that I've found quite regularly that happens to me um, with multiple financial institutions actually, is that the banks don't always get it right. And sometimes they do accidentally take out more fees than they should, especially if you use your credit card a lot for overseas transactions. Sometimes they do tend to charge a lot of overseas transaction fees that aren't 100% correct. So do double check on that. And it, especially if you do use your credit card a lot in different places and online, you are more at risk at becoming victim to fraud and scams. I would strongly recommend that you look through your bank statements at least once a week or once a fortnight, just to make sure you recognize all of those places that come up in your transactions. And if there's any that you don't recognize, get on the phone with your bank straight away and cancel that card because it means somebody is using it without your consent. Next, let's talk about your phone and utility bills. Shop around. A lot of us tend to be complacent with our phone bills and, and once we get a phone or a contract, we don't look at it ever again. Very important to always double check the market because there's always new phones coming out, new phone plans, and all of the telecommunication companies are always competing with each other. They're always coming out with new plans that are either cheaper and or contain more bang for your buck. Also have a look at your invoices as well to see how much you're actually spending, especially with your phone plan. Go shop for a plan that covers the amount that you actually use. The good thing about a lot of these telecommunication places is that they do show you a history of what you've been using and you can find that out quite easily, whether it's through your online account or through the bills that you get sent. 
So have a look and find the plan that's actually suitable for you, not just whatever is the most promoted on the market at the time that you're looking. Same thing with your credit cards. So if you have a credit card and your interest rate tends to be quite high, see if you can find somewhere else with lower interest or that interest-free period just to buy you a little bit of time. But every service that we get, every product that we buy, there's always a competitor out there that wants your business and is willing to give you a little bit of extra benefits for it. So shop around. Make sure you are shopping around to find the best rates for your groceries and petrol. There are certain days of the week at the supermarket where the groceries are actually a little bit cheaper. It's not necessarily the produce and your day-to-day -day items, but things like the beauty aisle, the beauty and skincare aisle. For example, Woolworths often have specials on every Tuesday for beauty and makeup. A lot of their products are half price. So if you're going to be buying it anyway, wait until those days to shop. Same thing with petrol. Petrol costs actually go in a cycle. So if you hadn't noticed, there are certain days of the week where it's at its highest. Usually on a Friday before people set out for the weekend, if they need to fill up for road trips and things like that, gas stations tend to capitalize on that a little bit. But certain days of the week, usually around a Tuesday, that cycle dips and it's at its lowest. So that's when you see the big long lines waiting at the petrol station. Make sure you fill up on that day because petrol prices are actually quite high now. That's one of the things that inflation has affected a lot. So depending on what type of car you drive as well, you can save a lot of money there if you pick the cheapest day of the week to get your petrol. Another tip to help you save a little bit of money is to eat in. So rather than go out to restaurants or get takeaway or Uber Eats, buy food and cook at home. Now, one thing that I always have issues with in cooking for yourself or buying for yourself, especially if you live alone or you don't have a huge family or anything, is that a lot of the produce that you buy, so like things that expire quickly, and so like fruits and vegetables and things like that, they tend to go off quite quickly before you can even finish them. Big reasons why I would rarely cook at home in order to save money because vegetables in itself is quite expensive. So when you buy all of that, if you use it all up over the time that you have planned, sure, that will definitely save money. Unfortunately, a lot of us don't. And by the time we actually get to using all of those vegetables, they're already off and it feels like a waste. Here is where I would actually recommend either buying the smaller package pre-mixes or go for something like HelloFresh. For those of you who don't know, it's a company that actually allows you to pick different meal plans and deliver the ingredients right to your door. So you're only cooking the specific portion and specific meals that you pick as part of your meal plan and you only pay for that. And a lot of the ingredients that they provide actually is plentiful for the price that they charge. And not only that, they do a lot of specials very regularly, especially if you have friends that you can recommend. Sometimes you actually get an entire box of food that feeds you for a whole week and it would only cost 10 to $20 because of the specials that you've already saved from recommending friends or from coupons and things like that. What I love about them is that they do have a lot of variety in their recipes, so you'll never get bored. And over the long term, it actually saves you money if you're the type of person that will buy a lot of produce and having to chuck them out because you don't eat them before they go off. Last but not least, my final tip for money saving, quick and easy and simple, of course, is actually saving money. So whatever income that you have, put a little bit aside. I know in this economy, it's hard to actually save money because it, it just feels like you're living paycheck to paycheck. And especially if you have to cut down on costs in order to pay for something else. I'm not talking about putting in, putting aside 40% or even 10%. It doesn't have to be everything you have, but it doesn't have to be nothing either. Even if it's something small, every single week, put aside $5 or whenever you um, get paid from your job, just $20. If you do that regularly, that little savings account will start to grow. It may not seem like much at first, but it will get to a point where that money matters, whether it's an extra $200 to go towards Christmas presents or an extra $500 to go towards your next vacation. Every little bit helps. Do not underestimate the power of consistency. Something small regularly for a longer period of time makes so much more impact than just big, huge sums for three, four, five times, and then you stop because it gets too much too hard. And that is all from me today, guys. Thanks so much for listening. I hope today's tips have helped you somewhat into sort of sorting out your finances a little bit and a few quick, simple ideas to help you save a little bit of money in an overinflated economy. If you've got any questions or comments, please drop it down below. We would love to hear from you. If you've got any special money saving tips that you'd like to share with us, we would love to hear it. Please make sure to follow us on social media. We're on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Keep up to date with all of our amazing content and please follow me on social media as well. My Instagram, TikTok and Facebook is stellabella.au and I would love to hear from you. I hope you all have a wonderful, stress-free week and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.